Sweet. We are up and running. Hey guys, we're going to start shortly here. Just set a few things up. Matthew, what's popping? Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me in the chat just because I uh, haven't done one of these in a while. How's it going, Matthew? So uh, for everyone that's here so far, we're gonna be doing a general Q&A, talking about what's going on with my WRX, talking about the newest generation WRX and what there is to know, um, and et cetera. Glad to hear everything's fine. Um, so far, I think it's just I think it's just you actually. I think everybody else left, so. Um, but yeah, so uh, general Q&A, talking about the new gen WRX and STI, what's going on with my WRX. Um, I really wanted to hop on because I got, I've got i been getting tons and tons and tons of emails saying, when are you going live? So uh, I found some time and now I'm live. So uh, hopefully everybody who was asking ends up on here. Um, yeah, no, I'm not a huge fan of the newest generation WRX just yet. We'll see what happens underneath the hood. I've, I'm not terribly excited about the way that it looks. Um, I really think that they could have done a lot more with the body of the car. But I mean, if they wow me with what's under the hood and the numbers that it makes, I'm probably going to be a big fan of the WRX and STI. It really, I think this one's really defined by performance for me. Because I think there's still a lot that we can do in the aftermarket, even if it looks the way it looks now and what we're seeing. I think there's things to be changed. So, oh, you're a Subaru employee? What, do you work for like corporate Subaru or you work for a dealer? Yeah, they usually keep everyone in the dark. It's like, I feel like if you're not designing the car itself, you don't really know dealership. Yeah. I've got a few friends that work for uh, like corporate Subaru. They're engineers at Subaru. And even even the teams that work on these cars, they don't really know what's happening until all the teams talk. And it's really like high level corporate understands what it looks like until it's like, you know, a year out from release. And then they kind of have an idea. I'm jealous, 18 WX. I think once, hopefully, you know, knock on wood, if my uh, if my WRX survives its current problems, um, I hope to be moving away from the WRX platform. Maybe not the not the Subaru platform, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be selling my my WRX and getting a new ride for the channel. Um, it'll be a Subaru, maybe, probably, uh, and it'll be kind of like an interim car between what we have now and the you know potentially the next generation i'm either gonna depending on when the next generation comes out and how much it is i'm gonna have a new car for a short period of time and then it's either going to become one of the two bigger steps up that i've been talking about for a while now or i'll get a i'll pre-order a brand new 2022 sti but it really depends on when it comes out and when they're available because i bet you with what's going on now it's going to be a fair amount of time before we actually see them and they come to lot so uh, yeah, Matt, uh, could be a BRZ. It's been on the list for a while. My only, so I'm considering a BRZ. My only, my only qualms, the BRZ is you got to do a lot to make power. And that's my biggest concern that like, if I'm buying a car that I'm only going to have for six or eight months, maybe I'm worried that like the potential of a BRZ and putting a turbo kit or a supercharger on it might not, you know, it's going to be three months before I get everything on to the car. It might not be worth it. So. I don't know. I, I'm still weighing the options here. Matthew, you should definitely go out there and start a YouTube channel. It's uh, it's very rewarding. It's a ton of work. It's like a ton of work. Um, you know, if you follow the channel, I uh, I try my best to make content. You know, I'm super busy. Uh, I actually have like about 130 videos planned to film in the next six weeks. And I don't think that's even possible. I'm going to try my best to do it because I want to make, I've got 130 videos left that I wanted to make about my WRX and the WRX platform, which sounds crazy. I promise none of them are BS videos. They're all great videos. And like, I've already filmed, there's like nine modifications that are like queued up. So in the next like three or four weeks, I'm going to go back to the two videos a week. So you'll see two videos a week, but 
you should start a YouTube channel because, you know, it's a grind, it's a learning experience, it's a lot of fun. And hopefully, you know, the goal always is to pay for your car, which I'm five years in and I still haven't figured out how to do that, but hopefully we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, Matt, I'm, I'm hoping that the next ride will be a 2020 or 2021 gen. And I'm, you know, I'm not gonna tell you guys yet whether it's a BRZ or an STI or a type RA, you guys know where I'm going. So uh, should be some fun on the channel coming up soon here, assuming that I haven't gone and blown my engine, which I am hoping that that's not the case, which could be fun for the channel anyways. I mean, won't be fun for me, but if I blow the engine and I've got to fix the engine anyways, I'm going to put in an IAG short block and we're going to make some real power. So I don't know. You guys might hope that my engine's blown. I hope that's not the case, but it is what it is at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, the power is poor on the BRZ, but if you put a turbo charger on it, you can make good, uh, good power. Ooh, ESC 818 ringland failure at 60 K miles. Yeah. So I'm honestly, I'm heavily considering an STI for the interim period. And I'm, if I do that, I'm going to get one that still has a warranty and I'm probably going to do everything under the sun that doesn't really throw out the warranty. I probably will still tune it, but towards the end of my ownership of it, just to hopefully avoid any of the EJ notorious issues. Matthew Ibarra, I hope, I don't know how to spell it pronounce your last name. I apologize if that was really bad. I do have Instagram. It's WRX underscore enthusiast underscore. Uh, I don't really post on there that often, like every once in a while. I've got to get bet more into it because it's something that I've been meaning to do for literally forever. But if you start a YouTube channel, you'll know, man, Instagram is really important. But if you're actually out there filming videos, you don't have time for it because you spend all your hours editing. As silly as it sounds. Yeah, so I'm going to, the idea is, uh, ES, ESC. Uh, the idea is I'm going to stay somewhat put in the Subaru community because I love this platform. Uh, but yes, the idea for this channel is to keep doing a little bit of Subaru stuff, branch out, be a little bit different within the Subaru stuff, kind of get more experience in the Subaru community, and then bring in the community from the Supra and the GTR because those are two, those are really, those are going to be the two goal cars for this channel is a uh, A90 or A91 Supra and a R35 GTR. And I'm hoping to bring at least one of those in the next 12 months to the channel. Uh, but I do want to get an STI and a BRZ on the channel for uh, a period of time. And then probably a next gen WRX or STI. So I'm hoping to have, you know, in the next 12 to 16 months, at least three or four cars in and out of the channel. 2022 Golf GTI. I personally would never own a GTI. I think they're awesome cars and I think they're a lot of fun. You can make a lot of power off, you know, from them with very little money. I just, front wheel drive is no go for me. I just don't think it's very fun and I appreciate the cars, but I don't think I could ever really have a ton of fun with a front wheel drive car. Um, I'm kind of, you know, I, I, I drove a rear wheel drive car for a long time. That's how I got into the car scene and now I'm in all wheel drive. Those are both fun. I had, you know, my first couple cars were front wheel drive cars and I was absolutely miserable having a front wheel drive car. So if I were to go to the Golf platform, which I almost did instead of my current WRX, is I almost bought a Golf R um, and the Golf Rs are absolute monsters. I The only reason I didn't is because the Golf R, I'm not in love with the way that it looks. The car performs, it's, it's a wonderful experience driving a car and the performance is one of a kind for the price point. I just, they all look the same in my opinion. So I was really having a hard time. You know, I, I like to be expressive with my car and I couldn't figure out how to do that with Golf R. So that's the reason I didn't pull the trigger on one. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Also, if you just joined and you know, just hopping on. So tonight we're doing a quick live stream, just some updates, general Q and A, talking about the channel, uh, talking about the newest generation WX, you know, kind of what the plans are. Uh, so if you've got any questions, drop them in the chat that's over there, I think. Hopefully I'm not flipped. I don't remember. And uh, if you guys are enjoying the live, give it a thumbs up so other people, you know, get alerted that we're around and that we're online. Um, hopefully I'll be getting back to the every Saturday live stream. It's been kind of tough as I'm making a big push on uh, making videos because, again, you know, if you're just joining, I am going to be selling my WRX in the next, you know, month or two. And I'm making a huge push to film the rest of the videos 
that I wanted to film and the, do the rest of the mods that I wanted to do on that car before I let it go and move on to the next project for the channel. Um, so that is kind of what's happening. Um, so I will be only live every once in a while. So if you still need to reach out to me, Facebook, email, Instagram are all great options. And again, you know, if you're here, you got a question, whether it's about Subarus, WRX's cars, what you're doing, what I'm doing, what I do for a living, literally anything goes. Um, cause I know a lot of you guys ask that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, the sky's the limit, but yeah, um, so it's pretty, you know, it's pretty, it's been pretty exciting. One thing that I'll be bringing to the channel that I think, you know, will be exciting for everybody is I'm going to be doing a fairly large giveaway for 10,000 subscribers. And I'm going to start it hopefully in the next two weeks because we're kind of inching there, uh, you know, in all transparency, I'm going to try to do it to help increase subscribership. But I'm going to be giving away like six parts for WRXs. Most of them are for WRXs. They'll be like one or two BRZ parts. And I'll have like a form basically when you enter the uh, giveaway that like lets you put in what car you drive so that I make sure that if you drive a BRZ, you win one of the BRZ prizes and you don't get a WRX prize, if that makes sense. Um, and some of them are big ones. Like I'll be giving away a duckbill spoiler. Pretty excited about that. A couple F1 lights for WRXs, front and rear emblems, all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, pretty stoked about doing the giveaway. It'll be a pretty big deal. So I'll, you know, I'll get, I'll get everybody, you know, it'll, I'll put something in a bunch of the videos, you know, five or six videos will have information about um, the giveaway, but it should be pretty exciting. I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. I did get some new, uh, new emblems in for JXR. So, uh, you know, there's some cool stuff coming, but yeah, um, I hope everyone's doing all right too. I know it's been a while again since I've been live. So it's, you know, I've been kind of disconnected a little bit from the community. I still have been trying to get as many comments in as possible. You know, I've been, watching what you guys say on the videos and trying to respond as much as I can. Um, so yeah. And guys, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. Happy to answer. Uh, yeah. So I don't, I don't even know what to, what to go for on the agenda for today's live. Um, I guess I did want to follow up kind of on the most recent video about what's happening with the next generation WRX and STI and kind of my thoughts and opinions. Cause one of the most common comments was, you know, do we really think that those are going to come out in 2022? And if they are released in 2022, are people actually going to be able to buy them with what's going on with the car market and, you know, all the microchips and everything and sourcing raw materials and the slowdowns and interruptions? And it was, you know, it's a good question. And I'll probably make a video dedicated to it. But I think that we might actually see something that's interesting and different. The car might get released for 2022 and we might not be able to buy it till 2023. And I think it's a, a serious concern. And I think that a lot of people are planning on buying the next generation WRX and STI. And I don't think they're going to have access. And I think we've actually seen some creators go ahead and order the 2021. I know that um, Sub Zero, I think that's what he's, how he says his name. Uh, he's had a WRX on his channel for a while now. And I think he just pre-ordered and like fully built out from Subaru a 2021 STI because he's probably got the same worry. And I know other people have talked about it in creators that the next generation might come out and it might be nearly impossible to get that generation car. So there's a big risk as creators that, you know, I'm, I'm tuned in on it because I really want to have that next generation first so I can make content on it. But I also, you know, that also influences me and it makes me do a lot of research so I can tell you guys, but for all of you guys that are hoping and waiting for that next generation, it could actually be longer than we had expected. You know, typically we would see those cars hit lots, as soon as August for this next generation, that's typically how Subaru and other dealers, other manufacturers release and how the timing goes with releases. So I don't know if that's actually what we're going to see. The BRZ was a little bit of a test and showcase. Now it is kind of available, but it's still kind of hard to get. It's not the same slowdown. So we'll see what happens. Um, Four wheels one. It's probably the best time to sell your WRX. And that's why I'm, I don't know. I'm playing the fool's game is I'm going to hopefully sell my WRX for way more than I bought it because it's way worth like substantially more than I paid for it. Um, and I'm making a separate video on it. But I mean, really, my WRX is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. See, four wheels. That's I'm, I'm in that range, too. Of That's the increase on it. And I've had it for two and a half years. I've put 25,000 miles on it. The only problem is, is I'm going to sell it and then I'm going to go right in and try to buy another car that's in overinflated. I'm just hoping that the next car I buy it overinflated, but it's a, 
you know, it's a, still a good deal and that I can hold some of the value when, when the market shifts and it really decreases in value. So I don't know, it might be a fool's game. It's kind of like the house that I'm in right now. Uh, our house is worth stupid money right now because the housing market's just absolutely crazy. But if I were to sell it, I don't really have anywhere to go. You know what I mean? So it's the, uh, I'm in the same boat. Super, but contemplating a Cayman S. It's a hard, that's a hard choice. I, I find that if you don't spend real money on a Porsche, that I'm not a huge fan of the way they look. Performance wise and, you know, you get behind the wheel, they're fun to drive. I just really like the way the new Super looks. I haven't actually driven the new Super yet. So that's got to be, it's on my list of things to do, but I'm absolutely in love with the platform, the way it performs on paper and what it looks like. So it's always been, you know, maybe one day, hopefully in knock on wood, things go right for me in life. And, you know, I'd love to have a GT3 RS, which would be a lot of fun. Um, but I think there is also, you know, between a Cayman S and a Supra, something goes wrong. The Supra, while expensive to maintain, is still going to be less expensive to maintain than a Cayman S. And you're probably going to carry over whatever Toyota warranty comes on it, where a Cayman S isn't going to carry over that. And there's something real to think about there. Cayman GTS dream car. Fair enough, man. I mean, if that's your dream car, do it. Like, get it. Make it happen. Like, I mean, if you've got the money and it's liquid, right now is one of the best times to get a car loan. Um, you'll get, you know, you'll get your most loan APRs right now are so attractive that you should finance regardless because you can take whatever money over that and dump it into even a high interest yield savings account. And you're going to like really take chunks off of that. Do you know if better material cams get installed for, oh, retracted. Yes. See, I think I know what you're about to ask, but you know, go ahead and ask it. <laughs> uh, if you're new to the if you're new to the live stream, guys, this is a general Q and A. All questions go. We're talking about the new generation WRX. What's going on with Subarus in general? What's happening with the channel? If you've got any kinds of questions, Subarus, my WRX, WRXs in general, you know, tuned cars, cars, whatever you want to ask, life things, you know. Ask it in the chat. Anything goes. The sky is the limit. Um, hopefully, everybody's having a good night. Uh, this will be not too long of a live stream just because I need to sit down and edit three videos today. So I, I've got to I've got to cap it. Um, we'll probably go until like nine thirty, nine forty five. So you know, if you got a question, Bruin, don't be afraid to ask. Um, the CV was my dream car since I was twelve. It's just a little boy. So four wheels one, right? I'm totally there with you. Like I had a dream. So I, so as a car person, I've got my obtainable dream car, my semi attainable dream car, my super reach. I need to be really successful dream car. And then I've got my, I'm probably never, ever going to drive it dream car. Right. So for me, that top ceiling, I absolutely love the LaFerrari, you know, the Pagani Huayra. And then you know, when I was a kid, that that next tier down was an R35 GTR. Um, and then that obtainable or whatever you want to call it was a Super WX or an STI. And I think that making sure I kept that lens, the WX is still a dream car. I still want to have a WX or STI in my driveway forever because, you know, in that range and it's a drivable car, I, you know, it... While although it doesn't fill the void an R35 could fill, I'm still super happy with it. And I think some perspective there is make sure that when you're looking at your dream car, you know, if, if you're if you if you sell your soul to get and work like crazy and get an R35 in three years, right? You've busted your butt to make as much money as possible. Just know you're gonna get that R35 and then you're not gonna want to drive it anywhere. So I've really said to myself, wow, the STI, the WRX is my absolute dream car for the car that I'm going to drive on a daily basis, go get groceries with, you know what I mean? And I think, you know, when you put it in that perspective, it's an amazing vehicle, uh, but that's just me, right? That's just me. The 400Z, that, all right, so I made a video about the 400Z. I've edited it. It's sitting on YouTube. I haven't published it yet. I don't know whether to publish it or not. I'm super nervous about publishing it. Because I feel like, one, nobody's going to watch it because I make Subaru content and the Z is such a stretch. But I'm really excited for the 400Z. The 400Z, you know, I kind of like the way it looks. But, you know, I kind of liked the Z platform forever. 
not enough to get one. I almost bought one before my first WRX. I almost bought a 370Z instead of a 15WRX. I ended up with 15WRX. But the 400Z has the promise of the next step on power. And I'm so excited for an affordable two-door sports car to come with the numbers that it probably is going to produce. I'm really excited. And I think it's going to be a catalyst for everyone else in the sports car industry of, wow, we need to make more power. Because forever, you know, in the last eight years, I really think sports cars, like obtainable under $45,000 sports cars, are really getting chased hard by our, by our economy sedans. Like, you know, a V6 Honda Accord is now performing as well as a lot of cars that people consider entry-level sports cars. And I think that's a problem, you know, as a car person. And maybe it's not a problem, but I don't like that. I think everybody... Every manufacturer that makes that like low-end sports car to up to 45K really needs to take a step to get further away. And I think it'll do a lot different, like it'll make a difference in the community and, and all that stuff. And I think the 400Z is the first step in the right direction. Who knows? Maybe we'll get a 400 horsepower STI. That might happen. But I don't think it's going to happen. And I think it's going to be a big letdown. And I think the 400Z is going to take a lot of our WRX STI owners out of our community and they're going to move to that. So I'm excited to see what happens there. All right, so the new head unit. Ugh. So the new head unit, this bad boy. Um, haven't installed it yet because the car is not running. I might install it tomorrow. Um, that is the plan. It's supposed to be 95 degrees here tomorrow. And I need to install it outside because I need the lighting to install it. I can't install it in my garage. So... I might put this head unit in and I'm super excited because like, look at how skinny this is. Like I've put two Seikan head units into my WRXs and the boxes were easily like this much wider. So I'm really excited to see what this thing offers. Um, so maybe it'll go in tomorrow, which means you guys will see it like three weeks from now. Uh, I do is very much pressing me to get this thing done and installed. I'm just like, my car has just been sitting and I've been spending all, all my time trying to diagnose why it's not working. I've got it. It's going to brand tuning next Friday. So you guys will get an update. You know, there'll be some modification videos coming out between now and then. Like we're not, you know, there's videos coming out because uh, I've been doing stuff to it. I've been doing a lot of vinyl wrapping and stuff. I don't want to give too much away, uh, but I'll keep you guys posted on what's going on there. But yeah, new head unit will be going in uh, probably in the next, you know, I'll probably install it sometime, hopefully tomorrow, but in the next like four or five days. So you'll see it three or four weeks from now. The, the head unit videos take me so long to edit. They're like, it's like easily... If I spend four hours a day editing, it's like, you know, four or five days to edit these ones. So um, it's coming. I promise it's coming. Uh, do you know if the new material cams get installed on a little one under warranty? Um, I just wasn't going to answer my question. Ring my failure. ESC 818. Probably not, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know for sure, uh, but it's, it's, it's more rare than you would think for dealers to fix older parts. So it depends on how old your STI. I don't know if you mentioned it before. If your STI is older than our current VA generation, it's almost a no. You're going to get the part that has the design, you know, the build uh, bill of materials uh, that was out at the change to the new generation because there's no, there's no advantage to Subaru to change the material. Um, you know, as they get older, as they get out of warranty, people got to pay to fix the problem anyways, unless there's a lawsuit. So they don't have any incentive. Current VA generation, maybe if you're if you got Ringland failure, they might have made some changes. But unless we get a TCM or we get some kind of bulletin from Subaru about a recall and a change in parts, likely that's not the case. Um, so I don't really know. I know that with the newest uh, few years of STI, there have been a little changes. But when you're thinking about material changes, the materials then act differently, and who knows what has to change in the block itself to, you know, accommodate those changes. So I don't know. I don't know the engine perfectly. I'm not the engineer, but when you change something in an engine and it's a moving part, likely other things have to change. So I doubt they're going to, they're going to take an internal, you know, combustion engine part and make a small change because it could throw off the rest of the engine or the tune or whatever the ECU is trying to understand. Francisco, I love the support, man. 
16 STI. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, ESC, are they replacing? Are they working on your current engine? Or are you getting a brand new engine, new block, everything? So I think that's the clarity you need. My guess is they're rebuilding your engine and they're not doing a full replacement. Uh, rarely does that ever happen unless you blow a hole in the side of it and it's still, they'll try to rebuild it because it's cheaper. If you get a full replacement, you might end up and you might end up with uh, the, some of the newer parts and newer materials. But my guess is probably not. But you're going to get a warranty on what they give you anyways. So uh, ride that warranty out and, you know, send it. <laughs> Uh, guys, if you're new to the live stream, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. If you're enjoying the live stream, smash the like button so other people get notified that I am live right now. Um, and yeah, so uh, in this live stream, Q&A, if you've got any questions, Subarus, WRXs, ProTunes, cars, anything, life, the sky's the limit. Ask it in the chat. Just be appropriate, I guess. Um, and yeah, uh, we're talking Q&A, what's going on with the channel, my car, your car, everything. Use 2018 WX. I love the facelift. You're lucky, man. All right. So Rev Hang, Keeper Calamity. If you hate the Rev Hang, you got to get a tune. It's going to get taken out immediately. I couldn't stand the Rev Hang, and I got a tune and, you know, haven't looked back. Distance the clutch travels before it engages. I've only heard that complaint from people that are super tall. Are you super tall? I'm honestly, I'm honestly curious because I agree it's very different from other cars, but with this platform being like the first car that I've truly owned and driven manual, it's not a big deal for me and jumping to other cars. It's sometimes nice when there's less of a throw and a uh, tighter engagement on the clutch, but I actually don't like it. You know, the, what jumps to my mind is like the 370Z or the 350Z, very much a, a shorter clutch throw and a much uh, sooner engagement point. I find them pretty difficult to drive. And I think a lot of Z drivers, especially because Z drivers are typically older, have problems with that. They want the full throw and extension of their leg. But I don't know. I'm curious. Forza, I might be getting an STI too. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what ends up on the channel. Uh, Raj, which I doing unit I got. So, uh, for the Impreza or for the WRX? For the WRX, let's see. I have yet to open it. I'll open it with you guys live. You're going to have to watch it again when I do the video because uh, I like to do the unboxing and stuff. But I don't know. Um, you know, full transparency, I doing sent this to me. Um, usually, well, recently, especially with head units, um, I they use my videos as like install videos for their website. So typically if I'm doing that and they're using the video outside of YouTube, which is benefiting them, I do ask them to uh, I do ask them to just send it to me because they're, you know, I'm, I'm making a product for them. But uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. This is their this is the latest and greatest. It doesn't say. Um, I know that they have varying levels of RAM and such. From my knowledge, and I'd have to look back at my emails with iDoing, this is their newest generation for the WRX and STI that has the most, like it, it retains the most, um, it retains the most uh, pin connectors. So you don't have to have all the extra pin connectors. Theoretically, all the stock connectors plug into this and you don't have to have all the go-betweens, which makes it a lot simpler. And it also solves all the problems that I think a lot of you guys have when you actually put the head unit in, sometimes you can pinch a wire and something goes wrong because there's not a lot of room because we have that some support pillar behind the head unit. So this is supposedly the latest and greatest with the highest RAM. But if you are looking at some of these, uh, you know, Chinese manufacturer, over manuf overseas manufacturer uh, head units, what's important to understand is these things, you're not, you know, you're not running a program, let's say. You're not, you know, you're not going and computing like I, I'm an engineer. So you're not running SolidWorks on it or something. You're not doing 3D modeling. There's not a lot of processor heavy, you know, GPU heavy. You don't even have a graphics card in there. But I guess the point that I'm making is between two gigs and 16 gigs, you're probably not going to notice on a daily basis. And unless you're like using this thing to watch Netflix, play games all the time, I would recommend just getting the cheapest option because in reality, you're not going to notice 
the you know very small performance upgrades and everything with the head unit. So just my two cents. Um, but yeah, I apologize. I don't know the exact model number of the ideal head unit. I want to get a CVT, but there's like none in my area. This seems so hard to find. Uh, a tiger or a tiger. Um, yeah. So when I bought my first WRX, which is a CVT, I had to. I'm in Boston. I had to drive down to New York City to get one. It was a good deal. I got super lucky. And then when I went to sell it. I was like the only person in this area that was selling it. And a guy contacted me actually from Pittsburgh. And if you can believe it or not, I actually drove that CBT and there's a video on this channel about that whole trip, which like nobody ever watches, but it was like one of the most fun videos that I've made on the channel. Uh, and it was like more of a vlog, but I drove my WRX CBT all the way to Pittsburgh, which was like 14 hours to actually sell it. And then he paid for my flight back to Boston. And then I flew back to Boston. So it was like this crazy, like 36 hours of just, you know, I, I went to work in the morning, drove straight through the night to Pittsburgh and then got onto a plane immediately. Like he, he like looked at the car and I told him like, you know, I'm coming down there. You're going to buy it. So, uh, all cool. You know, we did all the stuff. I dropped the car off at his house. You know, we went and had a little bit of fun in the car. I showed him all the quirks of the CVT and then he just drove me to the airport and I left. So, crazy experience. I know what you're feeling. Uh, it was a wild experience. So yeah, Raj, uh, appreciate the support. Uh, wondering if the OEM short throw shifter is worthy. Lee, um, I've never thought about changing it in my car and I don't know if that's a bad thing. I hate short throw. Well, I don't know if I hate short throw shifters. I don't love them. I've never, I've been in plenty of short, I've been in plenty of rides with short throw shifters. I can't speak. That's a mouthful. And I've, I've never been like, wow, this is something I want to do. It's kind of like, wow, this is kind of cool. And in the right situation, yeah, I would never pay the money, but that's my opinion. So do what makes you happy. But uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully I answered it. Maybe your question was, uh, was about OEM versus like Boomba. Um, I'm indifferent. I think people make decisions more over price. I think typically just from an engineering standpoint, a short throw shifter is a short throw shifter. It's a mechanical device. You could like take the bill of materials on one and the bill of materials on the other and compare, but I think you're all right. Go with the cheapest one. It's one of the few things that I will actually say that it's kind of like, you know, the greatest example is like, you know, we make, I make these, there's Forrester all in black. You can buy mine or you can buy one from Subaru or you can buy one from Subi Speed. The only difference between the one that I make and Subi Speed's is I sell it for half the price. Is there a difference in the material and stuff? Not really. I've asked them to give me better adhesion and better tape when I'm making it. So maybe it sticks a little bit harder, but that's really the only difference. So that's typically when you're looking at a non-functioning part, that's something to think about. Now, sure, there's material parts like when you're dealing with like aluminum versus stainless steel and you're talking about something that's going to take torsion and structural stress, then there's a whole conversation. But I think you're all right with the OEM shifter or a Boomba or wherever you want to go. Are you getting unequal length headers? Uh, negative Ghost Rider. Not on my WRX. Um, I pretty much would never consider it on a WRX. One, because you decrease your performance. Two, it's not great for your engine. And then the, the other side is they sound freaking amazing. But I, I wouldn't do it on a WRX. I'm going to, I might get an STI for the Rumble. Um, I guess there's, there's few enough people here and, you know, I guess it's not like you guys are going to tell everyone in these videos don't get enough. I I'm going to be getting an STI. I'm not going to tell anyone yet. And you're going to watch, if you're watching this in this video, you're going to, or this live stream, you know, you're going to see in the next few videos that I kind of tell you guys, I don't know what I'm getting, but I'm, I'm getting an STI. So WRX is going, STI is coming in and then that STI I'll have for until the newest generation comes out and I get a Supra. So. You guys heard it here first. Uh, hope you get the WRX back up and running. Looking forward to more content on the Impreza hatch. 2014 hatch and the trading from 14. Yeah, so the Impreza hatch, I might be doing some stuff on it, but there's, the problem is, is I love that car. I'm currently, you know, I'm not the one driving it on a daily basis right now just because I don't have to do as much driving and I got my WRX. The videos did really poorly. And that's fine. And I still want to make content around it, but it's harder for me to go out and do modifications on the car when I know that I can't recoup and it's not a car that I would mod otherwise. So I'm happy to do that. I'm a WRX, happy to do that. The STI, the Supra and all those things. 
But if they're not my super fun car, I don't want to dump a ton of money into them when I can't really return it. Um, I will make more content around it, but I'm not going to do some crazy, crazy things because I know that was something on there. So there will be videos coming, but I, again, I don't, you know, everyone that's new got about 120 videos planned for the WRX. Some of them are filmed, but I'm going to be finishing all of the spectrum of content that you need to know about the VA generation Subaru WRX before I move on to the STI. So that's kind of what's going on. Uh, Lee, you got it. Kyle's nice. Aesthetically, do you like the rain deflectors on the WRX? Wow, that's a great question. That's a solid question because I have been battling with that question myself for ages now. And I don't know if I, on the right car, the right color combination with the right things done, they look good. But if they're alone, I'm not a huge fan. I think the car needs the rest of the supporting modifications. And if your car looks already modified, you've got a lot of accents you know, duck bill, things like that, I think they can be a nice change. That's a really good question, though, because I ask myself that on a daily basis. I know, they are cheap. So I'm actually, uh, for JXR Performance, I'm going to be trying to make some. And with the, with the idea that I, the only reason I haven't bought them for my car is they're still like 90 bucks, 100 bucks shipped usually. And a hundred bucks is just out of the range of I'm like, screw it, I'm gonna get them. So I was like, I well, I know they can be made for a lot cheaper. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna make some for myself, list them on the site, put them on my car, and hopefully provide the like the I don't know. If you want to get them and try them, they're just cheaper and it's more available. It's kind of like what I do with the F1 lights. So I don't know if you guys follow JX, what I've been doing with JXR Performance, but like for Memorial Day, I was actually with the coupon code that I was listing, I was selling my F1 lights for like 50 bucks shipped um, with the idea that it's good for, you know, it's good for the business and it's good to like get stuff moving, but also like $50 allows people to try the whole light. You know, I mean, you pay 150 bucks for a Subi Speed F1 light. I'm trying to get them for $50. It's essentially the same, it's the same light but then it's accessible. So, you know, that's kind of the, you know, that's kind of the, the, what I, what I'm hoping to do so I can take those things that I'm torn about myself and make them more available and easier to get. So I'm not feeling as bad. If you guys want an F1 light for $50, I guess, let me know. Uh, Cause I, I could still do that if you want. So always let me know. Um, aesthetically for myself, I found Ricardo seat rattle fix. It's on my channel. Antoine, what's your channel? I'm curious. Is it just your name? Antoine, let us know in the in the chat what your channel is, and we should all go check it out for a second. I'm all about supporting the little guys, or the big guys. Maybe you're way bigger than me, because I'm a little guy. I'm on my second F1 light, had trouble with condensation. Sorry to hear it, man. Yeah, I, I've been running, so before I did a mass production of the light that I'm currently selling on JXR, and I've got like a bunch of different variations, I ran one on my WRX for quite a while. I let it sit in a lot of water. I was like splashing hot and cold water on it. Uh, tried to put it through some, you know, through the ringer to make sure that those weren't problems because I had heard about issues with other manufacturers. So hopefully no issues with the ones that I make. You know, again, I put it through the absolute ringer for a long time before just to make sure that it was all there. Um, but yeah, I'm 5'10 and most cars have the seat all the way back. Put in the WRX and move it forward. Yeah, all right. So 510, you're right. I mean, the WRX, I've always, the WRX, I've been closer to the steering wheel than any other car. And maybe that's because, and I'm just used to it because it's, I've been driving these things for like four years now. But you are right. On other cars, I do find myself, I'm 5'8, five, 5'9. Five, five, I find that I do sit further back than in the WRX. So if you're not comfortable in that cockpit feel where it's kind of hard to get into the car without your legs sitting, it, yeah, I see what you mean, but I guess I've gotten used to it. And I like that feeling. Like if you build your car and your interior in a way that makes it feel like a cockpit, it can make it more fun to drive, but that's my two cents. There's no way to super chat 10,000. 10, what? I mean, if you want to send me 10 K man, I'll like dedicate a car to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish, you know, that's like, I, I don't know. The comment makes me think of Mr. Beast. What he does for small creators and stuff is incredible. And it's, and it's, it's kind of like, 
you know, I'll digress for two seconds here. When you make YouTube videos, YouTube, although everybody, ex you know, expects you to make good money, right? And YouTube makes some money. And I'll actually, I'm going to make a video of actually how much money I make right now as a small creator on YouTube. You make a little bit of money, but that little bit of money covers a very small portion of the equipment you need to actually film videos and do all that stuff. And then it doesn't cover anything beyond that. And then like when we do car, like when you look at automotive YouTubers, man, oh man, all this stuff is incredibly expensive. So I try my best to like use the little bit of money that I make from YouTube to cover some of the stuff so I can do more modifications. I think like one of the big things is I start to make more videos about cars is I've got to like get into the mentality. It's hard because like, I don't want to do, I wouldn't choose necessarily to do every modification that I do. Um, but I try to like put the frame that people want to see it. So I got to try to do it. So it's all like, as silly as it sounds, running a YouTube channel is a business and it's, it's, it's not a very profitable business. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> now, I have the hundred dollar rain defectors off eBay. Love them. Yeah. Rebecca, that's kind of what I'm going for. That's like for JXR. That's what I was hoping to make is try to get something like in the $70 range, just so it's easy and obtainable, like easy to get. And you don't feel that bad. Like you're baking, breaking bank. Um, Rebecca, what color WRX do you have? I'm very curious because again, I'm, I'm torn too. So I think they look good on the right colors, but I think on some colors, like I feel like on the World Rally Blue, a lot of people seem to run them on World Rally Blue WRXs. And I feel like that's the one color where I'm like, it depends on the build. I can't decide if I should sell my 21, 21 WRX and get the new FA24, keep it and modify annoyance of weak engine. All right, so ready, raffle gate, Gator, I don't know how to say your name. Sorry, sorry, man. All right, here's the deal. We still don't know if it's going to be the new 20 FA24. So take that in mind. Two, this is what I've been talking about in all my videos. If they were to come out, I want the FA20 in the new generation because I want them to take the FA20 and make the internals better. What you've got to be careful with and what nobody seems to acknowledge because everyone's like, oh, the FA24 is so much better. It's not going to come with crazy internals. It's just a bigger displacement engine. So you're going to make more power. You know, you've got bigger displacement in the engine. So the idea, you know, in reality, they're not going to strengthen internals at that FA24. Very low chance that happens. So one of the reasons I'd rather the FA20 than the 24 and the newest gen is if they can do anything with the internals on the FA20, because it's, it's an engine in production, they know what's going on. They've had six years to tweak, you know, give me something that'll hold 500 horsepower. So just take that, take that in with a grain of salt. You might, the FA24 might be in the next WRX and STI. It might make a little bit more power. There is not much indication yet that it's going to hold more power. So we know that the FA20 and the WRX comfortably 330 wheel horsepower, same torque, you know, that's more flywheel and clutch, but same torque. We might get 300 wheel horsepower out of the FA24, but we might have still have the same threshold, like the same ceiling. So just to say it, any tips for en enhancing in-car audio on the WRX full speaker replacement? That's a really great question, Kyle's nice. I've never, I've never gotten into uh, working on audio for the WRX. I think that doing the head unit, this bad boy, gives you a little bit more control over some of the audio, but nothing for an audio file. And personally, my, my exhaust is so loud that I can't hear things anyways. So I think that if you're really thinking about it and you really want to do it, I would recommend doing a lot of sound deadening, you know, putting in insulation under your chair, really make it an enclosed environment. And then I would recommend starting with all of the Subaru OEM kickers, tweeters, sub, and then getting some, getting a much, you know, more in depth, um, head unit not one of the overseas head units that are android head units i'd go with something that's uh like a you know something that is geared towards music and not user interface so that's my two cents i'm sorry i'm not more knowledgeable i just my cars have always been so loud that it's hard to even go for it uh rebecca honestly i can't remember i think they're more oem ones came with a bunch bunch of japanese maybe chinese right hand yeah rebecca it's probably just kind of one of the manufacturers that you know, makes these for me. So uh, there are companies out there in China that, you know, make these and they make a lot of them. And a good example is like, what's a good example? So like uh, front lips, right? You see front lips on eBay, you see front lips on Amazon, you see front lips labeled from, you know, uh, manufacturers that we know and brands that we know. 
typically they're all made in the same factory. It's the same design, no trademark, no IPO, um, no patent on it. And everybody just rebrands it. They private, private label it. So it all becomes who can buy the largest quantity to give the cheapest price. So might be the same as everything else. Uh, mine is pure red. I have a lot of black accents, so it definitely works. Have you ever changed out a fuel injector? 16 WX, um, stage two as well. Have not done a fuel injector. I might, I might have to do all kinds of fueling stuff on my current car because of the problems that I'm having. So I don't know. There could be a lot of content around that to come. I've never done anything fuel related on this on this platform yet. I've never really opened the engine. Uh, I've never fit like personally opened the engine. Um, so I, you know, I've seen blocks cracked open and I've seen rails cleaned and everything, but I've never personally been doing it uh, just because I've been lucky enough that I haven't had to. Um, Rebecca, one of the things, you know, if you're new to the video, I'm doing a massive giveaway um, for 10K subscribers. One of the things I'll be giving away is a pure red duckbill from OLM. So you should you should enter that giveaway when it becomes out because I'll have something that'll go for your car and it'll be free. JDM stuff is usually superior, so I bet it looks rad. My friend has them on his white STI. It looks great. Yeah, I think white is a good good color for uh, the um, rain deflectors. Guys, also, if you're here, you're enjoying this, smash the thumbs up. Helps the video get seen by other people so other people can join and add their questions. And if you've got questions, because this is a question and answer, don't be afraid to ask them in the chat. I'm probably going to be on only for another like 10 minutes here, guys, because I do need to crank out a couple videos and get editing so you guys can see a video midweek. Now I want the 24. Well, it is what it is. I have a boring channel. I just like to help the Subaru community. Hey man, technically I have a boring channel. I try to make engaging content, but sometimes it's not as engaging as like the Stradman because I don't have $3 million worth of cars and I can't do a modification every other day on my car. So sometimes you just gotta do it, you know, I try to make I try to make real content, honest content, and I try to make it as interesting as possible. I like to think of myself as an educator. You know, I try to make my community as educated as possible on this platform so you guys know exactly what you're getting into, everything. And I'm trying to be as honest as possible because even when people say they're honest on YouTube, they're not. It's all BS. So I try to give people the upfront realities behind these cards. Lee, yes. I you know I've I knew how to drive stick before my current WRX, but I never owned a car that was manual. So, you know, I'll be I'll be the first person to say it. I never really knew how to drive manual until this WRX. I wasn't an expert as I am now. Now it's like you know, it's second nature. I get into an automatic and I feel uncomfortable because I'm trying to grab stuff and push on a clutch. And I wasn't like that when I bought the car. So I really had to like get my head into it. The WRX is a great car to start with. Uh, Kyle is nice. I agree. I wish I wish I could have lower ten than thirty five percent, but Massachusetts doesn't allow lower ten than thirty five percent. See, Rebecca knows. Speaking the truth, blow off valves. All right, blow off valves. You got a blow off valve, which is full atmospheric hybrid, which is some bypass and then atmospheric, and then a bypass valve, which is no atmospheric release. WRX is run like crap if it's full atmospheric. Hybrids are some. Okay, some of the time, some manufacturers are better than others. Bypass are great. Um, the things just to understand is typically they have to be run on a tune. Sometimes you need speed density and you want to do it with flex and all those things. And that's a deeper conversation. Just make sure you do the research. There's only like two or three out there that run okay with these cars. Otherwise, they're going to give you a ton of grief and a ton of problems. And it's one of the few reasons I haven't installed on my, on my car. I love the way they sound, but... Um, all kinds of problems come with them and people have all types of issues with blow-off valves, whether it's vacuum leaks or just terrible running, terrible regulation of air-fuel ratios, all kinds of problems. So just do your research. Mr. Nerd Games with Poppin. It's been a while since I've been live, so I do apologize. So I was in 20, I was in 2024 when I got stage two. Wait, wait, wait. So in 2024, when I go stage two on my 2021 WRX, the new FA20 will have the same power as my stage two. I mean, that's perfectly, that could happen. Um, you know, as, as cars develop, we get more power. It is, I mean, that's, that's what working on cars is.
Yeah, Rebecca, you should still follow the giveaway. I'll be giving away like six parts for free. I'll be having different parts for different cars. So you can be part of the giveaway with one car and still win parts and not accidentally win a part for a BRZ or a Forester. So I'll have a bunch of different parts being given away. Most of it's going to be WRX and STI parts. There'll be some front and rear emblems for the BRZ and some you know, like lettering for the BRZ and the Forester, but that's pretty much it. The rest of it's going to be WRX and STI. Uh, I just bought a crystal white pearl WRX oil change after a thousand miles. Yes, get an oil change. TJ Mizu, uh, definitely do an oil change after a thousand miles. Might as well do one at 3K, do one at 6K, and then do the one every 3,000 miles. Be proactive. Good oil, good car. Stay, keep it healthy. Lease for three years, learn how to buy manual, then bought a new one. Learn how to drive manual, then bought a new one. It's pretty smart to do. Cylinder one misfire twice now. 30,000 miles, all car parts, cat on the car. Uh, Rebecca, who is your tuner? Yeah, Antoine, editing is the hardest part about YouTube. Filming videos is hard, but it's so much easier. And I, the, the greatest rule of thumb is if you're good at YouTube, five minutes of filming will take two hours to edit. And that's, that's not, edit, like if you're, if you're the strad man, five minutes of filming is like six hours of editing and his whole editing team does it. But if you're making videos of my caliber, not crazy editing. I try not to do any crazy special effects. None of that. Five videos, five minutes of content is at least two hours of editing. So editing is the hardest part about YouTube and the biggest factor in when you're trying to crank videos out and make content. Uh, Houston, CP Motorsports. Never heard of them. Um, Houston might be part of it. I don't know. I like you live in different a different climate than I do, so I don't know what happens. I mean, every climate's slightly different in the way these cars perform, so that might be part of it. I would talk to your tuner, though. Um, sounds like it could be a tuner-related thing. Uh, I don't know, though, because I've got problems with my car, so and I only have 42,000 miles on it. Good tuner near Houston. I don't specifically, but there's a lot of great... Pro, uh, E-tuners. Um, uh, series Gray. Ooh, it's a good looking ride. Yeah, I think Texas, they're the pro, well, the be I think the best tuner, like if I were thinking the best tuners, bodies up there, Bren Tuning, Matt Miner, um i think that the northeast and california have some of the really great tuners there's some people in florida but i think that like you should keep as covid restrictions loosen up tuners typically will travel and do tune days and all that kind of stuff so look into it but it's not uncommon to hear people like i know bren tuning he tunes cars all from all over the country people make the drive all the way down get their car tuned drive all the way back just because you know people have great experience on, on bren tunes and I think that I'm just starting to understand that even though I'm running a brand tune, having a bad tune really can affect the way that you enjoy your car and bad tunes suck and it's hard to diagnose problems and you have issues all the time. So I completely understand why people drive 20, 30 hours for a tune and then back. So uh, it does happen. Lowering springs. Don't get lowering springs. Just get new coils. Um, when you, you know, save a little bit more money and get new coils. I promise you that's the way to go and get faction fat. And there's a they have, you know great deal, great coils. They're not they're cheap coils, but they're amazing performance. But they're you know you can go get F specs, drop eight inches or 0 0.8 inches, and have a better ride, better quality. And you're not going to put well. Don't get lowering springs. Spend a little bit more money and get coilovers. I highly recommend doing that, especially on a car with the quality suspension that it comes with. You know, especially if you're talking WRX, if you're talking STI, it's a no-brainer coilovers. Um, stock struts, it will be okay for 20,000 miles. Yeah. I don't know why, but tunes give me anxiety. Yeah, I mean, 
I mean, everybody should know if you tune your car, you're very much risking two of the most expensive aspects of the car. My general opinion is if you tune your car, you better be ready to pay 10 grand for a new engine. It is what it is. A bad tuner can, you know, I don't know. People like think about it this way. And this is my general opinion. And I don't think this actually happens that much because when a tuner is tuning your car, they're focusing, they're hyper focusing on what you're doing, but everybody makes mistakes. So I don't know. All a tuner has to do is make one mistake and then blows your engine. You've signed a shop waiver. It's not their fault. You're responsible for all the damage. So I just, that is something to keep in your mind as you do this. Really not uncommon. WRX is an STI is not so common to do this, but for other platforms and for higher horsepower tunes, getting on a dyno itself is a dangerous thing. Not uncommon to have serious problems go wrong getting on a dyno because they're pushing your ride. So something to think about as you get into the whole tuning world. But tuning your car will give it amazing performance and make it a completely different vehicle. Lowering springs, I guess, just in general, lowering springs are a completely different conversation because although they can be built so they don't affect your car too much, there are some big negatives to going springs. And just all together, when you think about the few sets of springs that you can, and this is an opinion of mine, the few sets of springs that are really engineered and designed to mitigate some of the issues that most cheap lowering springs cause, right? For a couple hundred bucks, you can get yourself some entry-level coilovers. It will not only eliminate those risks, but give you just a altogether better ride. So that's just my opinion. Um, and from an install perspective, springs, one, are more dangerous to install. And two, lowering springs are a lot more work, in my opinion, for most platforms than just installing new coilovers. Just my two cents. Also, lowering springs, no resale value. Coilovers, resale value. So if you think over two years, your coilovers, that price difference will mitigate itself. Um, you're not paranoid at all about tuning. Um, oh yeah, Rebecca, you're so right. Like I liked my WRX and then I got it tuned. Different car, new thing to love. I bet you if I took all the stuff off of it and ran it with stock tune, I'd just be like, you know, it would just be disappointing. So still love the car, but wow, completely different ride. If you say you drive a WRX and it's not tuned and you talk to somebody about their tuned WRX, it's, I promise you, and you're going to get this reaction. They're not comparable experiences. Some of the other parts of the car are, but if you're talking about how fun to drive it is and how fast it is, your stock, somebody's stage two, not comparable experiences at all. There's so much, I mean, I'm running almost double the amount of work. Wow. I'm running like a 60% increase in horsepower at the crank then stock. And I don't even have that aggressive of a tune. So just, you know, do the math there, completely different ride. This isn't supposed to be negative either. I'm just, you know, there's the perspective to have on a stock vehicle on what is possible. And that's why when people get their cars tuned, they tune other cars and you tune your first car and your every other car is going to get tuned because you know exactly what can happen when you drive a, a tuned car. Uh, the smart thing is strengthen the transmission and the motor before going to stage two. Uh, TJ Mizu, however you pronounce your name, I do apologize. Uh, I totally disagree. Um, if you're going stage two J pipe intake, um, you know, well, just turbo back exhaust and intake, maybe an intercooler or not, you're going to make basically on both platforms, you're going to make like 315, 320 wheel horsepower at the high end of that, right? You're, you're pretty much good with that doing more to your transmission, which you really can't do on a WRX or an STI and doing more to your motor isn't going to do much, right? So the things that jump to my mind is you do more torque, you're going to need a new clutch, right? You're not going to be doing strengthening work on your transmission. You're going to do some clutch work, right? For the motor, I don't see any point in spending any money on your motor unless you're running high horsepower or you need to rebuild it. Because when you think about strengthening your motor, you're talking like six to 10 grand anyways. You might as well go for 500, 600 wheel horsepower if you're doing it. Just my two cents, but I promise if you want to do stage two, you're just doing stage two, just run stage two. Go to your tuner, ask for a daily tune for those parts. You're going to get a tune that should be drivable for a long period of time without any issues. Yes, it's a double-edged sword. If you 
if you tune your vehicle again, make sure that your wallet understands money can come in and out. All right, guys, I'm going to draw the live stream to an end. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for pressing that like button if you did. Um, if you guys have any last minute questions, drop them in the chat. I can answer a few last minute questions, but I'm gonna go ahead and make some dinner for myself and get editing on videos. So I hope you guys have a, uh, hope you guys have a great night. Stay safe, um, and I will. Uh, I'll try to be around for another live stream next week. That's hopefully the plan. But I do have to get tons of videoing, video, 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 uh, or filming. That's the right word. I mean, my English is poor right now. Not to say that I've got another language to base it off. I just can't speak for some reason right now. Um, is there a Discord? I really want to make a Discord for this channel. I I've got to think about it because like the thing is, is there's so many things to manage. I've got to if this channel gets so my goal is to get this channel to twenty five thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Crazy goal. I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen, but if it does, hopefully I can have enough money coming in that I can pay somebody a couple hours a week to maybe manage some of the stuff to like set up a Discord and do all that stuff because. I can't do it all myself. So it's a total, it's a total first world problem. And you know, it is what it is. So, uh, and you guys will know more when I make the video about how much a channel with 9,000 subscribers makes, because you're going to be shocked at how little it is, <laughs> which isn't a good thing. So, uh, thank you guys for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna, I'll probably be on next Saturday. So, uh, look out for a modification video midweek and at the Friday, I'll always upload a video on Friday and I'm going to try to upload one on Tuesday or Wednesday as well. Um, so yeah, I'll be around. And if you've got other questions for me, guys, you can hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, or uh, via email. I'll I answer all the emails probably the fastest actually. Uh, did I ever find out what was wrong with my WX? Nope. And I'm still looking. I've got a new math sensor coming from Cobb theoretically on Tuesday. So I'm going to swap that out. I'll make a little video so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, no, it goes to Bren Tuning even if I solve the problem, solve the problem. It goes to Bren Tuning on this upcoming Friday. I'll make some content around that so you guys can stay updated. Um, but I'm hoping that I can get this card to Bren Tuning so he can do a full diagnosis to make sure that even if I've solved or I've solved the issue that there isn't something bigger building. So I'm going to have him run some smoke tests for vacuum leaks, look at other things, do more of a diagnosis on my car and hopefully, you know, make some commentary about making more power and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. And maybe that's not the right thing to say. If you guys are interested in what I'm meaning here, scroll back in the live stream, maybe like I, I've been on for a while, like 20, 30 minutes. I did say something about what's going on in this channel, what's coming so uh, if you guys have heard that on this live stream, you guys are going to be the first people to know because I haven't told anyone and I don't plan on telling anyone on the channel in regular videos for a while now. So uh, zoom back in the live stream if you want to hear what's coming next, but I will be selling my, assuming the engine isn't blown and I don't have to do crazy engine work, my WRX will be sold in the next one to two months and the newest car will be entering the channel. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Um, new STI or 400Z. The 400Z, eventually I'll get one because I'm so excited for it. But um, it's, it's, it's going to be an X, STI. I'm going to get an STI. So you heard it here. But, uh, you know, if you just heard me say that, just know that in future videos, because very few people watch these live streams, in future videos, I'm still going to pretend like nobody knows what I'm getting. But, yes, I'm getting a new STI. So uh, should be fun. Should be fun. Well, guys, I, I do have to call it. Uh, I do need to get editing because it is 10.04, and I've got at least five hours of editing to do just tonight just to catch up for a uh, video on Friday and hopefully Tuesday, Wednesday, if I can get ahead of it. So uh, thank you guys for being here. I enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, smash that like button if you uh, did enjoy it. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go press the subscribe button and, uh, yeah, browse some of the content on the channel. Helps me out, helps you out. And if you guys have any questions, shoot me an email, reach out. Thank you, guys.